Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is May the 15th, 2021. Let's talk boxing. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, many of you are up in arms over the idea of betting against Canelo. Right? I've already said in an earlier video that I believe the play right now, the value play, and it's all about value and betting, is on Caleb Plant. You're getting a plus 500 right now. It's on Caleb Plant over Canelo. My point to gamblers is simply, look, as the line adjusts, we'll come up with a hedge. Now, many of you are saying, you got to be kidding me. In what location are the judges ever going to vote against Canelo? Right? The idea is that Canelo hasn't been knocked down in a fight. The idea is that no one's going to come close to beating Canelo, close enough at least, to lose on the judges' scorecards. Right? People feel that Caleb Plant's only chance of beating Canelo is by decision, which gives him no chance. So folks are saying, look, why can't I just bet on Canelo? Call it a day, make some money, right? First, let me just point out a few obvious things. Invincibility is an illusion. In the 1980s, we thought Mike Tyson was invincible. People like Bone Crusher Smith went the distance with Mike Tyson. This is before the Buster Douglas fight, right? They went the distance with Mike Tyson. We also knew. Fighters like Buster Douglas had a great jab. And that Tyson would have to get through the jab to get to Buster Douglas. But yet, we thought Tyson was a paradigm shift. We thought Tyson was going to run the heavyweight division for years and years. The line for the Buster Douglas fight is preposterous even by Canelo standards. And I consider the lines in Canelo fights to be preposterous. Now, let's think about Canelo for a second. Understand, this is a guy who wasn't even a super middleweight that long ago. I know he has three of the belts right now, but let's be real here. Canelo has come up from lower classes. Well, let's look a little bit harder at Canelo. The point I'm trying to make here is his margin of victory isn't such that we should jump to the conclusion that at 30 he can't be beaten by any of the top fighters, including an unbeaten champion like Caleb Plant. Let me just point out that Canelo recently, in his last five fights, Right In his last five fights, he had three different guys make it into the 11th round. Right, Danny Jacobs goes the distance against Canelo. Kovalev makes it into the 11th round. Callum Smith goes the distance against Canelo. What I want people to do, too, is to look at the scorecard of the Kovalev fight. Now, if you believe that Canelo can't be beaten by decision, then you need to ask yourself how one judge had the fight a draw going into the 11th round. That's Kovalev, who's not the boxer, not the mover. Caleb Plant is. Right? One judge has the fight a draw, folks, going into the 11th round. The other two judges have Canelo winning by two rounds. So if you switched one round on each of their scorecards, if you took a round away from Canelo and gave it to Kovalev, they would have had the fight a draw. Right, so you have had, you have had guys lingering around on Canelo Right? Let's remember, two of the scorecards, two of them, in the Danny Jacobs fight, after 12 rounds of boxing, were 
113. Right, two of them. Let me also point out, too, that Canelo's had some other close fights. The Eris Landy Lara fight was split decision. So let's not get too caught up in the moment. Let's not start to believe the hype where we say, oh, nobody could beat Canelo and stuff like that. While Canelo's body of work is very impressive and while he certainly is a Hall of Famer, his body of work does not show him to be invincible. It just doesn't. Let me point out too, I didn't like the scoring in the Billy Joe Saunders fight. I've said that here on earlier videos. But one judge had that fight 77-75. Right? Understand, I know some of you are down on Chris Mannix, right? People are saying, hey, Chris Mannix isn't God. I've read some of the comments here. But understand, you had an announcer on the zone who thought that Canelo was losing that fight. Folks, he's not unbeatable at a certain price point. At a certain price point his opponent becomes the value play. Now I've been careful here, I haven't even named the two, not one, two, Golovkin fights. Both go the distance. If you believe the narrative of the first fight where they called it a draw, Canelo is supposed to have come back in that fight. In other words, boxing folklore has him losing that fight until he gets a second win. I have said here publicly, I don't believe Canelo won either fight against Golovkin. Right? I think Canelo's a great fighter. I don't think he beat Eris Landy Lara. So, I don't believe anyone here, if you're betting on fights, should fall in love with official narratives. Go by your score sheets. Someone in the comment section on an earlier video said, you know what, I thought Billy Joe Saunders was winning the fight, but he wasn't in control of the fight. Right, folks, what that tells me is that the fight was competitive. Now, Caleb Plant gave an interview on a PBC podcast where he said, look, I saw Canelo made several mistakes, several mistakes in his fight against Saunders, right? Demetrius Andre, who still wants to fight Canelo. In other words, it's not like these professionals saw Canelo and thought, hell no, 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 no. You know, not interested. I have my belt. There's no reason for me to risk my reputation, my unbeaten record, right? Both Plant and Andre on this fighter. Quite the opposite. Andre's take was a little bit different than Caleb Plant, right? Andre just flatly said Billy Joe Saunders didn't make the adjustments. I believe the fighters out there know, the movers out there know. Canelo's listed at 5'9". He's fighting at 168. Folks, Canelo realistically is 5'8". He's small for 168. Right? He's a great fighter. Don't get me wrong. His stature actually helps him defensively. You have to reach down and hit him to the body. Also, it's perilous reaching for anything on Canelo. Because Canelo's a great counterpuncher. But the short stature can hurt you against a guy who can move behind a jab. Against a guy who gets the political lay of the land and understands that they have to win some early rounds just to take the crowd out of the fight and to let the judges know. You're going to have to rob me in broad daylight if you're going to give this shorter guy the decision. 
So, let's not fall in love with May 2021. You've seen Canelo in numerous fights that hung in the balance in the later rounds. In what Golovkin fight? Did you look at the fight and think, oh, Canelo has this in the bag, entering the 11th round? Which Golovkin fight was that? When was it in the Aristotle Lara fight? And one judge gave that fight to Laura. That you thought, oh, Canelo has this comfortably. Right, quite frankly, I'm still puzzled by the scoring in the Austin Trout fight. Also, don't let the absence of tape stop you from reaching your own conclusions about a fight. Canelo has another draw on his record. It's to Miguel Vasquez, a fighter who during his career I thought was underrated, made several videos on him. They called him the puppet. The puppet had a great jab. He was a boxer, not a slugger. He had a great jab. His timing was unorthodox. It was hard to tell when he was throwing punches. Now, I've searched far and wide for a tape of that fight. It was early in Canelo's career. But the point is, Canelo already went the distance against a boxer and was not awarded the decision. Now, I've done my best here to stay away from the Floyd Mayweather fight because I know many of you are going to say, oh, that's Mayweather and stuff like that. Well, Miguel Vasquez wasn't Floyd Mayweather. When you look at the film of the first Canelo-Golovkin fight, you're going to see something interesting. You're going to see Canelo on his back foot. Canelo has dispensed with that style of late, right? He's always on his front foot against Golovkin, for example, right? He's on his front foot against Rocky Fielding. He's not on his back foot against Billy Joe Saunders, right? He's on his front foot. But understand, there have been some fights where Canelo has made the decision that it's too hot in the pocket. Now, the interesting angle here with this Caleb Plant fight is as great as Billy Joe Saunders is, and he's a great fighter, folks. Don't let this one loss fool you, right? A loss where, quite frankly, even his trainer thought that Saunders had found a rhythm. Right, where Saunders, quite frankly, was, in my opinion, doing well against Canelo. Right, Saunders is a great fighter, but Saunders didn't have a punch as hard as Caleb Plant's left hook. Right, understand, we, we want to believe that punchers throw all punches hard. Right, you look at a blessed puncher. Anthony Joshua is a blessed puncher. Right? And, you know, you say, wow, this guy throws hard with both hands. Right? He's an obvious puncher. But I found you have many more fighters in boxing like Deontay Wilder, where Wilder has a spectacular straight right hand. Folks, it's spectacular. But it's not like you're thinking about Wilder's left hook the same way, right? It's a spectacular punch, and the other stuff around it, you know, is really more supporting cast type stuff. Manny Pacquiao, spectacular straight left hand, spectacular. But it's not like you're really that worried, unless you're Ricky Hatton, who got dropped by Manny's right hand, but it's not like you're that worried about Manny Pacquiao's right hand. Well, understand, Caleb Plant moves extremely well. This is a guy who's among the best movers in the sport. And let me just say, his left hook is spectacular. Right? Caleb Plant only has to be right once with that left hook. Right? Only has to be right once. Let me also point out, too, that I know we're in a flat foot era. 
right? The fact that Rocky Fielding had a belt at 168 tells you we're in a flat foot era, right? You look at the heavyweights right now. The fact that Joshua, I know he danced for the second Andy Ruiz fight. Okay, fine. That That's rare, right? You were watching that second fight and you were saying, wow, Joshua is dancing in this fight, right? But let's face it, the heavyweight division, you know, it's Tyson Fury, Usyk, they're the movers in the division, right? You have some other guys who could move, but they're lesser known, right? Michael Hunter, right? Michael, where, where are you? But in this heavyweight division, it's more times than not a Derek Chisora type guy, right? Anthony Joshua when he's not fighting Andy Ruiz in a rematch. Deontay Wilder, guys who want to find you, guys who want to hurt you, right? Chris Hariola. Right? That's who the heavyweight division is right now. Well, understand, Caleb Plant, in my opinion, given that Canelo just had a 95-95 scorecard against Kovalev that we've forgotten about because of the 11th round knockout, Caleb Plant has a legitimate shot at outboxing Canelo. If Canelo gets desperate, and I believe Canelo is going to try to walk down Caleb Plant. He's going to try to get inside. He's going to try to force Plant to stay in the pocket. Folks, that's going to take several rounds. I don't see Canelo landing shots to Plant's body early in the fight. Let me say, too, that being lesser known, I'm not saying Plant's unknown, but I am saying there are more people who know Canelo than know Plant. Being a lesser known fighter has its benefits. Right? Sometimes you tune in to one of these big fights. All you know is that Canelo's fighting an unbeaten champion in an effort to become undisputed in the division. Then you start to see the opponent and you stop and you say, whoa, who, who is this guy? Where is this guy from? Right? If Caleb Plant, who has visual skills. In other words, you see Caleb Plant and you start to say, oh, this guy is smooth. <laughs> right? You're like, oh, this guy is slick. Right? If you see Caleb Plant and he starts to dance around Canelo and the problem with being Goliath is that our expectations become too high. Right? Let's face it. There is nothing LeBron James can do these days to win an MVP. Right? Uh, Michael Jordan, for crying out loud, got beaten out of the MVP award twice by Karl Malone. At a certain point, you see these dominant athletes, Usain Bolt, could run a 9-8 and we would be yawning because we've seen him do better. Right? In Green Bay right now, they're taking Aaron Rodgers for granted. Aaron Rodgers has taken the Packers to the NFC Championship game the last two years. Right? Somehow, while he was doing stuff like that, they decided, you know what, let's draft a quarterback. I'm just telling you the problem with being Goliath, Will Chamberlain knew it best is that at a certain point, no one roots for Goliath. Canelo is perhaps the most loved fighter in the sport. Right? His competition is very slim. It's Anthony Joshua and Manny Pacquiao, at least in my book. Right? That's because we still view Canelo as an underdog. Right? Canelo just got to 168. Right? If you recall, he was a middleweight. He jumped up to fight Rocky Fielding. Then he came back down. Then he jumped up to fight Kovalev at 175. It's still novel seeing Canelo above 160. Right? We also love Canelo because he's fighting real opponents. Billy Joe Saunders, unbeaten. Caleb Smith, unbeaten. Kovalev, 175 champ. Danny Jacobs, one of the most avoided men in boxing. 
Canelo's taking on all of that. But at some point, he's going to lose the novelty angle. And we're going to rebel against him. It happened to Will Chamberlain. It happened to Mike Tyson. You know what? If you look at the rematch of Ali Sonny Liston, there's a fighter who gets booed big time when he's entering the ring. Folks, it wasn't Sonny Liston for that rematch. It's Ali who gets booed by the Lewiston main crowd. I know a lot of other things are going on. Ali publicly declares himself a Muslim and stuff like that. But just understand, you're only boxing sweetheart for a short period of time. So if Caleb Plant comes out and is on his A game, if you want to see Plant on his A game, look at the Mike Lee fight. If Plant's on his A game and Plant's moving around and Plant is sudden with that left hook and Plant starts landing it, folks, there's a chance he could hijack the event, even in Las Vegas. So, yeah, I just disagree with those who say Canelo's unbeaten. Why even think about a hedge? This is the Canelo era. He's the man. Pick him in every fight. Folks, when he, fought, <laughs> when he fought Golovkin and was on his back foot, he was fighting a middleweight. He's now up at 168. Think about that. He's fighting bigger opponents. You've seen Canelo struggle against a light middleweight. Eris Landy Lara, that fight was at 154. He's now up at 168. The weights always matter. I don't care whether the public, you know, feels it's trendy or not. The weights always matter. Canelo is in very deep water right now. Billy Joe Saunders was very much into that fight. Before his eye socket got busted by Canelo. Right, Saunders, I blame Saunders for being too deep in the pocket against Canelo. But think about what that means. Saunders, who fought punchers like Chris Eubank, like Andy Lee. Right, Andy Lee had a hell of a punch, folks. Saunders wasn't intimidated by Canelo's power. This wasn't 160. This wasn't 154. Right, so yeah. When the casino says, hey, we're offering you plus 400 or plus 500 on Caleb Plant before we figure out the rest of the betting props, my response is, great. You know, where can I place the bet? I need to get this right now. Right? There is no one at 168. And I mean this. No one at 168 who is worth laying a plus 500 on Caleb Plant. Let me also go one step further. You have an interview that intrigues me. This is a guy who's unbeaten. This is a guy who's been the champ at 168 pounds. Right now, there are other issues. He tested positive for something. Got stripped, right, and stuff like that. Okay, fine. But just understand, David Benavides, who Abel Sanchez feels beats Canelo, and Sanchez had Canelo in his gym sparring against Golovkin, right? Sanchez has had opponents like Golovkin fight against Canelo, right? Sanchez has prepared fighters for Canelo, right? Sanchez feels David Benavides beats him. Well, Benavides said, look, I'll beat Canelo I have the skills, is how he put it. I have the skills to beat Canelo in an 18-foot ring. Right, folks? I believe there's a feeling among fighters that Canelo, who has three of the belts at 168 pounds, and he's earned them, right? He beat Callum Smith. 
He beat Billy Joe Saunders. I'm not saying anything was given to him at 168. He beat Rocky Fielding. But Canelo, who has three of the belts at 168, is still viewed by some of those at 168. And in the case of Andre, below 168, as vulnerable. Right? A mover like Andre, a mover like Plant, sees holes in Canelo's game. No doubt, those guys would love the opportunity to pump a jab, use movement, force the smaller Canelo to turn. The idea is, look, I'm not going to be bending in the pocket like Billy Joe to get hit with your flat-footed uppercut. Then, of course, you have guys like Benavides who used to weigh a lot more, thinking this guy's a small guy. He thinks he's going to own the pocket against me, a bigger guy? Is this guy prepared to take my punches? As I've said, boxing is a highly competitive sport. You show me the Rocky Marciano and the Floyd Mayweather, guys who we hear retired unbeaten. And I'll argue that Roland Lestarza and Castillo could easily have been awarded the decisions over them. Right? The great Sugar Ray Robinson was touring through England. Right? It was Robinson and his group who ran into a Frenchman who looked at Robinson and said, Oh, who are the members of your entourage? And that word became part of boxing folklore and part of Hollywood folklore. Right? He ran into an Englishman. Randy Turpin. Ray Robinson was supposed to be the cat's meow at the time. Lost. Got beaten up. Quite frankly, was struggling in the rematch that they had later. But, of course, landed the big shot, just like Canelo did against Billy Joe Saunders, right? My point is simply, boxing is very competitive. Don't fall for the illusion where it looks like a Manny Pacquiao or a Canelo can just disregard weight class, move up and down, pick up Kovalev's title, come back to 168, pick up Callum Smith's title. Hey, it's not that easy. When casinos start offering you plus 500 on unbeaten champs, you need to take that play. That's my betting philosophy. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this video. Right? If you believe Canelo is unbeatable, then spend some time explaining why both of his fights against Golovkin were highly competitive and went the distance. Explain to us how Kovalev is tied with Canelo. That's a recent fight, folks. That's four fights ago. Going into the 11th round. Explain to us how Danny Jacobs goes the distance. How Callum Smith, that's just three fights ago goes the distance, and the Callum Smith people are saying that Callum Smith pulled a muscle in one of his hands. Right? As great as Canelo is, and no doubt he's first ballot Hall of Famer. No doubt. As great as Canelo is, this is a highly competitive sport. Even the greats don't have that big a margin of error. That's how I see it. Yeah, you're damn right. I took the plus 500 on um, Caleb Plant. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.